There's one chair here, that, yeah. but I think that's probably for a musician. So we're going to move over here and just not sit down, because I think we're more dynamic people okay. than that. Okay, good. Um, you have been at the sharp end of the changes. Have things got better or worse for the artists themselves in terms of controlling their own business in the last 10 years? Um, I'd tell you, as a general rule, it's a, it's a great time uh, for creators uh, of, of all sorts. You know, the, uh, the tools that are available nowadays to be able to create. You can make a great record for a thousand bucks. You can make a great video for 20 bucks. Uh, you, can make, you, you can create much, much um, more dynamically and cheaper now than you should. When I first started the business back in the 1990s, if you wanted to... Uh, um, to have some kind of successful career, you, you kind of had to go through the traditional supply chains, whether that be record companies, uh, in principle, publishing companies, etc. Uh, and a lot of money was spent on making the art. Uh, nowadays, obviously, look, I'm sure we all know, uh, it's, it's relatively simple to create great art. It's really simple to, to create crap art as well. Um, be able to create the art doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful. Um, but you can do that, and you can have control. Um, one of the biggest things that I, found, I find nowadays, maybe even compared to 10 years ago, is that we've sort, we really are moving out of an old type world and into a more of a, a new dynamic world where you know, creators do have the opportunity to be able to be their own business, run their own um, operations. You, know, you, you look at it now, you can reach so many people all over the world Obviously, everybody can reach everybody over the world, so you need to work out a plan and a strategy and have a great creativity in order to cut through the noise. But that's more, you can do that more now, and I can see that's only ever going to increase. So one thing we're learning through Denzel's curation of the musicians over these two days is yeah. there is a lot of amazing talent that doesn't come through traditional routes. These are people who build their own social following. They're people who perform in pubs. Yeah and they don't need the record labels. Jacob Whiteside had a slide that said, the, you know, every artist is their CTO. Yeah. C CEO. Yeah. Um, where does this leave the management layer? Look, you know what, like, like everybody, if you don't adapt and, uh, and reform and evolve, then you can become a dinosaur. Uh, and that applies to managers, labels, publishing companies, anybody that's within the chain of uh, uh, of a business of, uh, of a, in the business of music, um, for us, you know, you know if, you, if you take a creator, some, some creators are never going to be their own chief execs. They're just not built that way. So that creator, if they're going to be building their own business and trying to create revenue streams all over the world from many different ways of creating, uh, they may need to have somebody as part of their team who can play that sort of chief exec role. You know, the the same. The same things still apply today, which is that you, as a creator, as a, you still have to have a good team of people around you who are passionate and that the creators can trust. That, I don't think that's, ever, that's changed. Uh, where a manager or a label or a publisher or anybody of those fit in, that line is very blurred now. Um, you know, at some level, I like to try and say when, when we're starting to work with new talent that we are almost their business partners. Uh, so we will, because we will sit alongside them. We will find them the investment, or put the investment in ourselves. Uh, we will find them the next, the, the, the routes to market, and try and obviously de define a strategy with them. So, Radiohead in particular have been on Wired's cover, pursued by Wired for years because they have a slightly innovative approach to finding a business model that works, um, charging a premium price for a luxury boxed yeah. set, for instance. Um, where do you see this entrepreneurial approach among the musicians going? Where does it evolve to? I think fundamentally it's going to evolve into more control, uh, more opportunities for artists to uh, to be able to monetize what they do. 
Um, I think that there's always going to be a traditional industry where you have a very hit-driven, uh, you know, get, get to the top quickly type of environment, but there is going to be a whole sea of people. There was an interesting article in, in the New York Times recently where they looked at six musicians, all of whom were sort of doing different things that would never have been possible. There was a saxophonist who uh, I think had probably about 400 subscribers who probably paid something like 10 bucks a month uh, to have private lessons online. You know, there, I think we're going to see a lot more of those individual type businesses, a lot more of the smaller type businesses where people are monetizing. I, would, I imagine that most of you don't know a, an artist that we work with called Fink. Uh, Fink is a, is a really great small business. Uh, does very well. He has a great living out of it. He has m many revenue streams from all over the world. So I think we will, we will see a lot more of that. Uh, it doesn't mean that the old established businesses uh, like the major record labels or even the big independent record labels, they're not going to go away because they have big, uh, vast catalogues of recorded and uh, recorded music. So we're just going to see a proliferation, I suppose, of businesses outside and around that. So where people are consuming money and music, they're not paying money in the same way. And there's been a bit of a controversy over how much musicians get from streaming. Um, yeah. Tom York yeah. in particular has had strong words to say about Spotify's mm -hmm. model in the past. Yeah, yeah look, the, uh, there's been a lot of um, friction and pain. Um, I am a big streaming fan myself. Um, I think the subscription access model is a really good one. It's tiny, the mu music we have, I think as, a, as a, a management function, the rights holder industry has really screwed it up since Napster onwards. Uh, I think part of those issues have been, and it's, it's, it's understandable, you know, you're a major corporation, you're the management of a major corporation, you need to protect shareholder wealth, you need to make sure you keep your bonuses going, etc. It's a time of dramatic change, you're moving from one sales-based, unit-based business model to something that's completely different. Uh, so you've got to manage your way through that. And in the process of managing your way through that, uh, I think we have seen uh, a lot of the money getting stuck in the pipes. So, so business models like Spotify, who pay 70% of their revenue to the uh, music industry, the difficulty has been that so little of that 70% has actually made it through. I think one of Tom's major issues was the fact that this pipe had become so clogged. So his thing is very much, you know, where, how do you sustain a business when, when the pipes are so jammed? One of the reasons that the music industry itself was investing in Spotify was, I guess, to have a bollock against Apple. They didn't want one dominant platform. Now that Apple has gone pretty big on Apple Music, yeah. Um, do you get worried that, you know, the highest value company in the world is able to decide who gets the exposure, what the pricing model is? Um, actually, Apple, well, through the whole iTunes era, uh, obviously Apple had a massively dominant position. And I think they were pretty good at custodians of that position. And I thought they, they treated it really, really well. Um, look, going forward, the, you know, the, obviously the biggest streaming service in the world still in our game is YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of competition. Um, so I, th I, I can't see that same dominance happening in that same sort of way. So uh, look, I think it's quite an interesting time because there are a lot of interesting players in the streaming world. Okay, so last question from me. We've got a lot of um, amazing musicians performing today. There are a few more um, this afternoon. Um, from your position of what is going to work in terms of building a career, yeah. what would you advise them? Um, patience. Patience is a big one. Um, plan for the long term. You know, understand that um, it is a tough game. Um, find your team players and choose them carefully. Stick with them even when things are not going so well, work it out with them. If, you're, if, you're, if you find that your music is not connecting, it's not connecting for a reason, so evolve it. Don't try and necessarily force what you do down that throat. Um, and, 
and keep building. You know, it is a, you, it, like many businesses, and uh, I've, I've worked on a lot of businesses actually outside of music, a lot of startups, it's, same, it's exactly the same principles. You, you know, it's, you, there's no right to success. Uh, it takes a long time. Uh, most of the startups that I've been involved with have taken, uh, you know, five, 10, 15 years to get going. Same thing. Uh, so we, certainly we encourage all of our artists um, to take that long-term approach. If they want to be doing music 20 years from in time, then they have to work towards that. Uh, it's been quite interesting for us. We, uh, over the last 20 years, we've had quite a lot of acts who have had big success on their first record. And pretty much with the exception of Radiohead, uh, ever, it's, it, that has actually resulted in an almost cataclysmic collapse because you get right up there and then you coming off the other side of it has been incredibly difficult and problematic. The teams have fractured, fallen apart, uh, and uh, that, you know, they haven't built the foundations for a long-term business. Final question, Brian. Um, to help us curate our own playlists, who's the last artist when you heard them for the first time you thought, wow? Of our own or not? Any <laughs> artist. Well, the last one of our own is a band called Catfish and the Bottle Men who I saw uh, a couple of years ago and now are starting to take off and do something really, really interesting. But again, you know, they've got a lead singer who's very charismatic, personality driven. Um, so for me, that's, uh, that's the one that I'm spending a lot of time working with at the moment. People are streaming as we speak. Thank you very much, Brian Message. Thank you, David. <laughs>